Hey, 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 welcome to Inspire Life Ministry. So glad that you all joined Pastor Kofi Bryant and myself on this evening. Yes. I'm excited about the word, amen. Mm -hmm. And I hope that you all are excited as well. Just want to remind you that you can go to www.inspiredlifeministries247.com. Amen. Good evening, everyone. Amen. Mm -hmm. For all those who have joined, we want to first say thank you for your support to this ministry, whether it's through prayer, Absolutely. monitoring, um, tithes and offerings, yes. donations, just you all encouraging us. Thank you. Thank you so very, you much. So very much. Amen. That um, we could not do this without you. And so we thank you for the Christ who is alive and living on the side of each one of us. Yes. We want you all to be encouraged through the word of God. We want you all to be encouraged to others. Amen. Yes. As we continue on this spiritual journey, we're going to open up now with the song by William Back Then, Be Encouraged. And we're going to move right into our Bible study lesson for Wednesday, May 20th. 2020. God bless you all and thank, thank you so you much. Know. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Let the devil know that you're encouraged. Let him know that you're encouraged. Let him know. Hallelujah. I don't know about you tonight, but somebody may be crying, but I come to this to the party. What an appropriate song for such an appropriate time. Be strong, my friends. It's impossible to see. Yes. Hallelujah. But God is going to work it up. Yes, he will. If you just believe. Remember this one thing. While you're going through. If God delivered Daniel, like guess what? Song. He'll do the same for you, 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 No matter what's going on, no matter you make it all right. But you gotta stick so long. Please hold on. Yes. Trouble don't last always. It won't be long. Trials are just a test. Just the test of your faith. So stand strong. Stand strong. And try your weeping eyes. Yes. A joy comes in the morning. It's coming. 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 Did he tell you to be encouraged? Did he tell you he would be there? That he would not leave? Believe him. I believe 
Gotta stay strong. Gotta hold on. Yes. Jesus, be encouraged, be encouraged. Hallelujah. 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 I needed that song. I needed that song. Hallelujah. I needed that song. <laughs> Amen. Be encouraged. Amen. Amen. Well, we are now down to the word of God. I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you got your thinking caps on. I'm glad you got your memory caps on to remember what we went over before. I'm glad you got your change caps on you know, and you're ready to delve into the word of God and you're ready to change. Uh, it's really all about change. It's not about staying the same. Amen. The hour of power that we share together, it's really about changing the, your proclivities from your challenges that you always suffer with and learning different strategies, isn't it? Yes. To conquer what you are struggling with. So I want you to know we're in it together. Yeah. That's the good news. The good news is however many people that are on the line with us tonight and have been on the journey with us so far, we're all in it together. There's not one person that's alone. No more. You might have felt alone in the past, but you are not alone today. Amen? Amen. So let us pray and let us get into the word of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 Father, I take all that I am and I count it dumb. Yes. I take you. all that you are and I magnify it. Yes. Father, raise up big and let me be entirely small. I am puny in your sight. I'm only big because of you. Yeah. And so, you. Father, I rest in you tonight. I don't rest in my own logic. I don't rest in my own Thank ideologies. You. I don't rest in anything that deals with me, the servant. For I am a servant of you, and I ask that you, through your Holy Spirit, yes, come into this place where we are tonight. Come on this line where we Thank are tonight. You, Heal some hearts tonight. Yes, Change some hearts tonight. Yes. Fortify, that is, strengthen some hearts tonight. And let there be resolves made by the end of this uh, broadcast that will bring about change in the lives of the believer. If you're listening to this prayer, and you mean business. Repeat after me. Father, Father I, come to you I come to you with full expectation. With full expectation. To hear from you. To hear from you. And as I hear from you, and as I hear from you, I will, I will obey, obey what you're calling me. What you're calling to, do. to do. I'm listening. I am listening with an ear. With an ear for change. For change. Change me. Change me. Encourage me. Encourage and be with me. And be with me as I learn. As I this learn message. This message. I came to change. I came to change. The devil will not stop me. The devil will not. And stop by the help me. of God. And by the help of God. I shall receive. I shall receive. I shall believe. I shall believe. And I shall be changed. And I shall be changed. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Again, welcome. I am going to uh, share my notes with you this evening. Yay! Yes, I'm going to share <laughs> my notes with you this evening. Give me one second. And I would like for you all to let me know uh, that you can see my, hold on one second here. See my screen? Something's different happening, isn't it, Michelle? Mm -hmm. So let's see if they can, we cannot see them, can we? No. 
You okay. are screen sharing. But I am screen sharing. Oh, here we are over here. Okay. Okay. If I am, if you can hear us, somebody chat with me and let me know that you all can see my screen. Chat with me and let me know that you can see my screen. I hope you can see my screen. So anyway, all right. God is good. Okay. I cannot tell though. Well, I'm going to go as if you can see my screen. Amen. Amen. Because I cannot see your pretty faces tonight. Um, okay. So I want to show you something here. We started our journey off, <clears throat> pardon me, in our series, in our self-quarantine series. Uh, we started off by asking the question, are you coronasizing? Coronasizing. We felt that that was allowing things to be or look larger than God's abilities. False evidence appearing real. Fear. We talked about the eclipsing of the sun. And what I wanted to do today was give you a couple of illustrative points about that. Um, because uh, to your right or to your left of the screen, if you can see my mouse here, notice right here, there's a sun. Notice right here, it looks like a half, almost like a half moon. Notice when we come up a bit more, it is a half moon, mm -hmm. right? Then when we get it right about here, it gets right here. And then here, and then finally a total eclipse, which is right here in the center. The reason why I brought up these or this illustration is because I wanted us to see a concept. First, we start off in our lives with a modicum amount of fear. It's not gigantic. The serpent or the devil always comes in a cunning way. If he comes overtly to you, you'll be shocked right away and you'll put up your guards and you'll do what you have to do. You'll pray, you'll, do, you'll fast, you'll do whatever. But the way that he did it in the garden is he beguiled the woman. He was subtle. The Bible says that he was the most subtle beast of all of the earth at that time. And so take the same concept. He's a subtle liar. He's not an in-your-face liar because you would notice it. He subtly lies to you. And so this illustration starts off with a sun with a little bit of shadow on it. See, you go to the doctor. He says, I don't have an identification for what I see, <clears throat> but I see something. Mm -hmm. Woo! I don't have an identification for what I see but there is something that shouldn't be there. Right. So your, your bright spot is starting to look dim. As we go to illustration two, it's just an inch or two over, according to my diagram. And so you still don't know what it is. By the time you get to the third one, he says it's cancer. Mm. When you get up here, then he says it's stage three cancer. Mm. By the time he gets right here, now notice you had no symptoms right here. By the time you got right here, you need hospice. Why is that? Yes, the, having cancer can do that to you where you can, uh, your body can uh, debilitate really fast. But what I noticed is when our thinking is challenged, when we believe the lie, the symptoms come on stronger. That's what I noticed. The symptoms come on stronger. So then we get to the full blown stage, which is right here. False evidence appearing real. The corona sizing concept is that you are not trusting God enough in these crises that you face. Whether that crisis is COVID-19, whether that crisis is your job, whether that crisis is your marriage, whatever the crisis might be. What if it's all of those? My, my, my. What if it's a Job type of experience? Hmm? What if you're feeling like Job? Everything is happening all at one time to me, to me, to me, and I wasn't doing anything to deserve this. Well, that's corona sizing. And what I want to encourage you to do is stop corona sizing. The method 
of which to do so is to have full trust in God. Yes, amen. To remember that in 1918, he cured the situation uh, when they had their challenges in crisis. And now we made it all the way up to your birth. Thank Jesus for your birth, by the way. Yeah. Let's thank God. I just had one myself. Thank God woo, 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 <laughs> for Jesus and my parents. And so, but you came along. And when you came along, we were not faced with 1918's problems. Just keep that in mind. You didn't grow up scared of the flu from Spanish flu from 1918. That, mean, that meant that a cure came up. That meant that some resolves were made and that you were safe. And so here's my point. In our current situation and in our challenge, as they were saying on the song just now, trouble don't last, always. And so corona sizing is that ability or that lack rather of having vision to see that God can be your total source. Yeah. Amen? Amen. And then we moved on that next week to another question yeah. in our self-quarantine series. And that was, are you contagious? And we discovered you got something. Oh yeah. You've been listening. You've been hearing. Now, some of us have been listening and hearing the word of God. Amen. So that's what we have. And some of us have been in the middle, listening Amen. and hearing the word of God, listening and hearing uh, Cuomo and, and, and Trump and other members that are expressing their values. We've been listening to them and the word of God and, some, and our logic. And some of us have just been listening to our logic. That means our self-talk. So what we discovered is you are what you're listening to because the more you hear it, the more it's going to come out of your mouth. Let me give you a biblical illustration. The Bible says that faith come by hearing mm -hmm. and hearing by the word of God. Yes. But I submit unto you, faith comes by hearing. The illustration biblically is he wants you to hear the word of God. But notice in your life how many things you've heard over and over and over and over again that you now believe. Some of you have had negative things said to you over and over and over again as a child. Amen. What did you grow up saying? I know uh, I grew up saying, I am an allergic to penicillin, okay? I can't even tell you what penicillin would do to me today. I'm not saying I'm not allergic to it, but I can't tell you because it's something that I heard over and over and over again. The teachers in my life, they say, you're stupid. You're bad. You're a bad boy. Because I had a little challenge with behavior. And they always told me that you were bad, that you were bad, that you were bad. So you know what I did? Second grade, I stayed back in the fourth, uh, first grade, by the way. Might not have been dumb. Might have had a playing problem. So I stayed back in the first grade. <laughs> by the time I got to the first grade again, guess where my desk was? You got it. Next to My desk was next to the teacher. Mm -hmm. I hadn't even done anything wrong yet. But the teacher from the previous first grade that didn't want me no more. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you can imagine somebody not wanting me. But anyway, they didn't want me. Told the next teacher in the teacher's lounge, oh, this Kofi, he got bad behavior. He's going to do this. He's going to do that. I started my first day off next to her, name on the board and ready for a check. Already. Well, guess what I did? I obliged because I believed it. I believed I was a bad boy. So therefore I take, you know, straws and shoot spitballs at people and pop somebody upside the head and just get up and run around the class and fight and all that kind of stuff because I believed it. My concept is simply this. What are you believing that was quoted over you? many years ago. And I'm talking many years ago. I'm not even saying yesterday. How about when you were 10 or when you were 20? That is what you're contagious with. So what you need to do if you're contagious with negativity is to reverse that negative thinking. Yes. We sometimes call it stinking thinking. Mm -hmm. You reverse that by renewing your mind with the word of God. What does the word of God say about you? Let's not go by what a teacher said about me. Let's, because if, if, if I fully continue to believe what the teacher said about me, I would not be talking to you today. If I thought I was special education 
for certain by the time I am now this age, I wouldn't be speaking to you today. But as you see, speaking clear, speaking fluent to you might split several verbs, but that's just where I'm from and how I choose to talk. But I'm intelligent enough to speak to you. That means I'm not special education, like I was told. So I'm explaining that you reverse the ill will that was given to you by the enemy by renewing your mind. Amen? Amen. And so if you are contagious with the word of God, then we encouraged you last evening to speak that word to people, to go and encourage people to be encouraged. Amen? Amen. And then we moved on to the previous week, which was quarantine, self-quarantine. That was the hallmark title of our message, and it was also the message for our series. And in that, we gave a or an assignment, okay? We gave an assignment. And so before I get into that assignment, I want to ask you a question. What has been your quarantined conversation? What has been your quarantined conversation? It's been seven days since our last joint homework assignment. Now I say joint homework assignment because we all should have been doing it. Amen. I was the first partaker. Then God gave me the message to a best friend of mine. And then he told me to tell you all the same thing. And so that's what we did last week. Seven days since our last joint homework assignment. What has your conversation been like? Amen. What have you been saying about the request from God that you had on the altar? See my little altar guy right here? This is an altar right here. What did you lay on this altar before God last week? Hmm. And what has your conversation been about that thing since last week? What has it been to God? Ms. Bryant. Yeah. They weren't supposed to talk to nobody about this, but I have to ask them because maybe they fell short. And what did you say to somebody else about that thing that you were giving to God that you were supposed to stay hush about for 14 days? If you remember the assignment, it was self-quarantine. Yeah. Self-quarantine that particular thing that you have from God or that you believe in God, that you are believing God for. Mm -hmm. Self-quarantine that, that is, do not talk about it. To any human if you can stand it and talk to God yeah. but if you did talk to a human who did you talk to what did you say amen amen so last week we decided to endeavor upon identifying your previous serious prayer request we found it in Philippians 4 6 that was us asking the Lord for our request mm -hmm. let your request be made known yeah. unto Christian God yeah, amen. amen. And so we discovered that we had to change our previous security code. Now, this is all metaphor, okay, using security and all of that. But the, the, the concept is, what was your request? And who have you been talking to? And for you to seal that conversation, we established what the request was from God, and that you requested from God, rather, and address the security code. Yeah. Meaning, shush, shush, and renew your mind about that particular thing. And we found that our answer was in Romans 12, verse 2. Then we took the new code, that is what God said. Hallelujah. So the new code is what God said, okay? Because remember, we had a request from God. We let others hear about the request. That request got tainted because they gave their opinions to us. We listened to the outside influences of TV, radio, media, etc. We Some of us even read fantasy books and we got answers from there. And so God did not answer those things we had on the altar. Mm -hmm. So what we realized is we gave away our security code to the wrong individuals mm -hmm. when the only individual that should have had that code was Christ. And so we said, take the new request, which is kind of like the same one that you had already that you thought God didn't answer and reestablish it. 
And so when we did that, we did that and we called it a new code. And that's basically what God said. And request and lock it up. That's what we said we would do. Lock that thing up. Secure it and quarantine it from the outside influence. Yes. And we found that that was in Genesis 17, verses 1 through 25. We used some other scriptures as well. Genesis 17 was talking about Abraham and Sarah and the promise of God from them to have a child, uh, Isaac. Uh, and the previous message we connected to our Sunday service where Pastor Shelley was ministering to us about Mother's Day. And she used uh, Sarah in her Mother's Day message as well. And so we found that they did have the baby, which was Isaac, and generations came from that. And so we needed to secure our lockup of our quarantined request by being encouraged by Genesis 17 and other scriptures that I mentioned last week. And then we discovered that fasting and prayer was very important, yes. very, very important yes. to turn down the plate, to turn down a TV show, to turn out down some activity that you're having uh, that may be hindering your uh, growth and progress. And we found that in 1 Samuel chapter 1, verses all the way from 1 to 18, we uh, discovered that uh, the, what I call her, matriarch, um, Hannah. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> uh, Mama Hannah. Uh, Mama Hannah was barren, we found. She could not have children, but she continued to request of God that she could and God promised her some things. She did not faint on the promises of God in her life, and he bore her or, or gave her a child named Samuel. Mm -hmm. And some others after Samuel. And some others after Samuel, <laughs> correct. Yeah. She got fertile. And so Samuel went on, as you know, to be a prophet of God, mm -hmm. and Samuel had a lot to do with the nation of Israel as far as picking the first king of the nation of Israel, which was Saul and the second king, which was David. And so we found that in Psalms 102, we found the prayer, that fasting and prayer yeah. together will guarantee you those results from God. Not that I'm trying to give you a recipe to cheat God, I just want you to stand on his word, amen? And so quarantining, we found that it was isolating those secret thoughts, I'm sorry, sacred thoughts, and giving them to God before you give them to people. Amen. One more time, quarantining, in that context we were using it last week, was to isolate the sacred thoughts and giving them to God, especially before we give them to people. Amen. 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 And now we are here talking about today. We are at self-quarantine series. Talk to yourself. If you need a title for today, title this message, Talk to Yourself. Now, I seen a guy the other day, and he was talking to himself, but himself was a tree. So he was talking to a tree, and he was motioning back and forth like the tree was talking back to him. So when I say talk to yourself, do you believe that I might be talking about that kind of talk to yourself? Not talking about that one. That kind of talk to yourself will wrap you up in maybe uh, hospitalization um, in a white coat or something like that um, at, at one of the local hospitals. But I'm not talking about that talk to yourself. I'm talking about, excuse me, where did it come from? Amen. Give me a second. I want this technical difficulty to. There we go. Give me one second. I want to know if you can still see my screen. Can you still see my screen? Amen. Talk to yourself. Look at my icon that came on the screen. <laughs> it's kind of a comical character but it's kind of true. On one side, there's a haloed individual, and on the other side, there's a descriptive devil individual. What I want you to gather from this is, he's listening to one of them, 
Do you see where his eyes are shifting? His eyes are shifting towards who? Yeah, the devil character. I'm not going to criticize him because before I criticize him, yeah, aren't there times when you and I are doing the same thing? Yes. You remember the little cartoons we used to watch, the devil on this side? And that's real talk. It's comical, but it's real talk. Amen. And so sometimes there's isolated thoughts where we're just talking to ourselves, like the screen just went by. And then I like this one a lot. Talk to yourself. And his little quotation down at the bottom, I love it. It said, it may be the best conversation of all day that you'll have all day long. And I believe that. So what I'm gonna encourage you to do is talk to yourself, amen? I wanna draw your attention to Genesis 2. Genesis 2. And in Genesis 2, I'm gonna be descriptive as to what I mean by talk to yourself. Here we have the first Adam. And in the first uh, situation with Adam, as you know, Adam and Eve were created. And you should know that much Bible. And, uh, and then uh, as they were created, they were sat in the garden. Adam first, then Eve next. But Adam was given a set of instructions from God as to how to dress and keep the garden. So I want to draw your attention to verse number 15. Verse number 15 in Genesis 1. Genesis 2. I'm sorry, Genesis 2, rather. I'm sorry. Genesis 2, verse 15. The Lord God took the man, excuse me, Genesis 2, verse 15, and I'm reading from the English uh, standard version. Standard version. Mm -hmm. Sorry, the English standard version. Okay. The Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to work and keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, You may surely eat of every tree of the garden, but of the tree of knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat. For in the day that you eat of it, you shall surely die. In the day that you eat it, you shall surely die. Now, that's his instruction. He can eat of everything, but if he eats of this particular tree, which has good and evil, knowledge base wise, he will die. Mm -hmm. Now, then Eve is, comes into the picture. When you read a little further down, let me see if I want you to go there. Do I want you to go there? Okay. All right. So, I want you to keep that in mind as we go to Genesis chapter three. No, no, I'm sorry. Did I read 17? You did. I did? Yes. Amen. Thank you, my baby. Yeah. Um, so I now want you to go to Genesis chapter three. And we're going to begin reading at verse one. I want to point some things out to you. You can okay. read that, Pastor. Yes, thank you. I'm reading from Genesis chapter three, the Old Testament, beginning at verse one down to verse four, the English Standard Version. And it reads, Now the serpent was more crafty than any other beast of the field that the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, Did God actually say you shall not eat of any tree in the garden? Verse two, And the woman said to the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees in the garden. Verse three, But God said you shall not eat of the fruit of the tree that is in the midst of the garden, Neither shall you touch it, lest you die, lest you die. Verse 4. But the serpent said to the woman, You will not surely die. Hmm. Hmm. Now I wanted to point out something to you. Remember, in chapter number two, Adam got his instruction papers from God. He got his identification from God. He was made in the image and likeness of God. Yeah. That's what it said prior to uh, chapter two, that we made, let us make man in what? our image, yeah. and in our what? Our likeness. likeness. And so he was made in the, identifi uh, he was identified like God. Okay, keep that in mind. So 
Think about this. In the garden, who was more like God than any other animal, any other beast, any other thing that was alive? It was Adam. Mm -hmm. Keep that in mind. When Eve came, same thing, correct? Nothing more godlike than those two. But notice in verse number, where is it? Two or three. Uh, go back to three. I want to go back Sorry. to what the devil said. Mm -hmm. You should not eat of the fruit of the tree. You should not miss the garden. But the serpent said to the woman, you won't surely die, right? Yes. For God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be open and you will be like God. Now, I want you to see something here. He's saying, knowing if you eat it, yeah, knowing good and evil. He's saying, if you eat it, you'll be like God. Now, already he's lying. Mm -hmm, deceiving. He's yeah. deceiving because mm -hmm. check this out. They were already like God mm -hmm. with, not, with no need to know good and evil. Right. They were in paradise. Mm -hmm. I would love to live with a lion right now. He not bite me, <laughs> Tiger King. But, but the, the whole concept is that they were already in a place, but he was coming to her lying. And when he lied, guess what she did? She became human, curious. And curiosity always killed her. Right, exactly. And so here's my point. So when you go to uh, Eve's failure, is if you're seeing my notes here, Eve's failure was in statement that she made in Genesis 3. She went back and she said, For God said, For God said you shall not eat of the fruit of the garden. Right? And in another translation, it says, In the midst of the garden, that you can't eat the tree in the midst of the garden. And if you touch it, she says, in the King James Version, if you touch it, you shall die. Mm -hmm. So what happens when she misquotes the word? Right. When she misquotes the word, Satan comes back to her and gives her more dialect that sounds like the word. Mm -hmm. And this is what I meant by he beguiles. He comes in with information that sounds correct. Right. This is part of the corona size. When you take, when the devil takes some truth and mixes it with a lie and meshes it together. And That's called perversion and distortion. Perversion. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And so he distorts the truth. Well, by the time he starts with his smooth, delivering tongue, saying what he said, Eve says, or Eve looked at it and says, for God knows when you eat it, your, days, um, your eyes shall be open and you will be like God, knowing good from evil. So when the woman saw hmm, that the tree was good for food, she said, well, well there, there is fruit on it. I, I mean, why would God make the fruit if he doesn't want me to eat it? She took it. And it says her little uh, priest was nearby her. And, he, and she gave it to him and he did eat. So I'm showing you a concept here. The enemy comes and comes with lying. Mm -hmm. He comes with distortion, but he comes real smooth. Yeah. And so when he does that, we, we fall. So now you see the first fall of Adam, right? So that's the first Adam. So what I wanted you to understand is immediately following the interactions and or instructions from God comes a test or comes test from the devil of your character to follow through with what God said. Mm -hmm. So immediately after God tells you something, good people, the devil comes with tests to or, or, you know, temptations, we can say. Yeah, temptations. Because God tests, the devil tempts. Yeah, amen. So, the, exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So he comes in with that persuasive tactic that he has and spits out a lie to us. And if we continue to converse, conversate with the devil, we continue to lose. That's why he always tells us to do what? Resist the devil and he will do what? flee. Amen? Amen. And so today's attack is because of yesterday's promise. Remember that. Your today's attack that you're getting is because of God's promise that he made to you before. Amen. The enemy always comes to test what God said to you. Amen. The devil always attempts the same strategies, especially the ones that have been hum uh, 
that have been successful in human history. He always does that. And so here we have the second illustration I'd like to give you by turning to Luke chapter four. Luke chapter four. He came at the second Adam. Now, what do I mean by second Adam? Real briefly, because Adam failed in the garden in Genesis, and because after all that happened, you have the, 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 the debilitation of the human race, you have Noah that had happened, all that stuff happened, and God wiped off the face of the earth, started over again, etc. And so Jesus Christ is known as the second Adam because when he was born, he changed everything and gave all us a chance to be grafted back in with God. Hallelujah to my Jesus. And so he tried with the second Adam because remember, the devil tries what has been successful in the human history. He's not human. So he studies us and he studies how to get in our heads and how to get in our minds and how to persuade us. And so that's what we spoke of last week. And so in our endeavor to understand us being contagious last week, we discovered that the devil cannot read your mind, but he can read what you do and what you say out of your mouth. And so as he has looked at Jesus coming on the scene, he tries to get him. Then I want you to know that when something is italicized in the Bible, that is, it's added, there are additives like him or comma, or emphasis on the word that is only there to give you further clarity on what the context or what the clarity of the Bible and what it's saying at that time. But it does not mean that every word should be there. If you read the Bible in a continuous format, like a letter, like if we were reading Romans, we would read the, we would read the letter of Romans. But in our situation, we have chapter number seven, chapter number eight, verse number four, but if you just read it like a letter, it would be more clear. Keep that in mind. So in this illustration, when we get to Matthew, I'm sorry, Luke 4, 1, I'd like you to read there. We're going to pick up at the story of Jesus. We're going to read down to 12. This was, uh, down to 12. Okay. I'm reading from the New Testament, Luke chapter 4, verses 1 through 12. Luke chapter 4, verses 1 through 12, and I'm reading from the English Standard Version, and it reads, and Jesus full of the Holy Spirit, mm. returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit in the wilderness for 40 days, being tempted by the devil. And he ate nothing during those days. And when they were ended, he was hungry. Verse 3, the devil said to him, if you are the Son of God, command this stone to become bread. Verse 4, and Jesus answered him. This is Jesus speaking. It is written, man shall not live by bread alone. Stop right there. Yes. Now remember what he did to the first Adam, his wife rather, still representative of Adam. Mm -hmm. He came with what God said, twisted it, and threw it back at the individual. The first Adam didn't know the right thing to say. But this particular Adam, notice what he said what did he say again in red it is written man shall not live by bread alone come on now keep reading verse five and the devil took him up and showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time and said to him to you i will give all this authority and their glory for it has been delivered to me and i give it to whom i will if you then will worship me it will be all yours and jesus answered him in red it is written, you shall have worshiped the Lord your God, and him only shall you serve. Stop right there. And him only shall you serve. Now catch that now. In your God only shall you serve. And let me ask you a question. Who was here first? In this illustration, it appears that Jesus comes on the scene, the devil takes him up, and he tempts him. But I'd like to point something out to you. There's never been a time where the, where, the, where the Jesus has served the devil. The, the devil has always been a servant of Jesus. So in other words, he's sitting here saying, I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you all of what you already own. Check that out. And if, I don't want you to turn there right now, but I want you to turn there. Can you said way to Luke chapter... Um, I want to show them something really briefly here. Luke chapter 10. Mm -hmm. 
And I stopped at verse 8. We're going to pick back up from verse 8, but I want to go to Luke chapter 10 because I want to illustrate something. What verse 10? Uh, Luke chapter 8, I'm um, 10 rather, verse 17. Luke chapter 10, verse 17, New Testament, still in the English Standard Version. The 72 returned with joy, saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. And in red, this is Jesus talking. He says, now keep this in mind, this is Jesus talking. Verse 18. I saw. Sorry. Chapter. Give us a second. Luke chapter 10. Okay. Okay, I'm sorry about that. Luke chapter 10, verse 17. And now we are beginning at 18. Mm -hmm. And he said, meaning Jesus, I saw Satan. He said to them, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Now keep that in mind. He saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Mm -hmm. Well, who is Jesus? Son. The Son of God. God. Mm -hmm. But he is who? God, God himself. himself. Mm -hmm. The Trinity, correct? Yes. So he's saying, I saw Satan fall like lightning from the heavens. He came down to earth. I saw that happen. And now he's on earth telling me what he's going to give me. Just think of that. So when you go back to Luke 4, mm -hmm. And we pick back up. I just wanted to show you that, that one key thing, that the devil is always trying to sell you something that you already own. You own victory. Hallelujah. You are victorious. Yes. And he's trying to sell you on potions, powders, and lotions to become victorious, to become healthy, to become wealthy. He's trying to sell you on job occupations and things like that to do get rich quick schemes mm -hmm. and stuff like that to get wealthy when you already are that. Yeah. He just has a way of lying to you. And I don't want him continuously lying to us and we continuously conversating with him and believing his lies. Amen. Mm -hmm. Keep going to what Jesus said back to the devil. Go ahead. I'm back in Luke chapter four, um, beginning at verse nine. And he took him to Jerusalem and set him on the pinnacle of the temple and said to him, if you are the son of God, throw yourself down from here. Verse 10, for it is written, he will command his angels concerning you to guard you and on their hands, they will bear you up, lest you, lest you strike your foot against a stone. Verse 12, and Jesus answered him, it is said, you shall not put the Lord, your God, to the test. Hmm, hmm, hmm. So what I see here is the enemy is coming and the, the, our Christ is coming with answers. But I need to point something very fundamental out to you that you may not know. And this is where I'd like to rest it, right here. Remember I just said italics in the Bible, in a literary Bible, a lit literal, literary Bible, Figure what I'm Literal to say. Bible. <laughs> Literary, literary, ah, excuse me. In the Bible, <laughs> italics are made to give you clarity on the understanding. So one of the italics I would like to point out in this particular scripture is the word him. Because they want you to understand that the devil was trying to tempt him. Mm -hmm. But what I need you to understand is every answer he gave, except for this one that says, um, in number, verse number, excuse me, verse number, shall worship the Lord God, thy new shall serve. And verse number 12, when he told Satan to get behind him, I want to submit to you that that's when he was talking to Satan. But all the way up here in verses number four, when Jesus says, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, he was not speaking with the devil. He was talking to himself. This is where I'm trying to get you to see. Jesus was, I know you were taught that he was talking to the devil. I got that. But remember this. He was spitting back what he knows that he learned from upstairs up to, you know, in heaven with God or being God. 
he was regurgitating the word of God to himself. Because right. remember, he was in the wilderness being hungry. Let's not forget he was a human and God. So he was in the wilderness being hungry and, 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 and faint like. And that is when the devil comes to your soul, which Pastor Shelley talks about Sunday as being your feelings and the seat of your feelings and such. The soul. So he's coming at you in your soul. He's coming at you at your weak moments. And at your weak moments, he wants you to have dialogue with him, dialogue with him rather. He wants you talking to him. But what I'm explaining to you is you need to encourage yourself. Yeah, amen. You need to talk to yourself and you need to regurgitate the word back to yourself. Yeah. This is what Jesus did. He said in verse number 12, I mean, I'm sorry, in verse number, um, verse number eight, it is written, you shall worship the Lord your God and him only shall you shall serve. You serve. Yeah. He's just regurgitating back the word because yes. he's not going to dialogue with an enemy that he already defeated. Yes. Think Hallelujah. about what I'm saying. He already crushed the devil. Yeah. He crushed the devil in the beginning. And then when he got, you know, when he died on the physical death here and he ascended back up to heaven before he went up there, he crushed his heel downstairs too. So he's always been above the devil and the devil is sitting here offering him what is already his. Yeah. And so what I'm trying to get us to understand this evening is that you have to encourage yourself yes. as your thing, your thing that you brought to the Lord, that request that is supposed to be in self quarantine. You need to bring it to the Lord and you need to encourage yourself yes. as far as what the Lord has told you. Don't forget what the Lord told you. Don't forget what the enemy keep continues to, to, to say to you over and over again. You don't want to believe that. You want to believe the report of the Lord. Amen. Amen. And so in uh, Matthew 4, 11, that gives us a little bit more understanding. Jesus spoke the word to himself. Hallelujah. And over his situations. And guess what the Bible says down the bottom? Let me just say this one part. Sure. So sure. Important. Say it. Um, so I just want to um, read verse 13 of Luke chapter 4. It says, and when the devil had ended every temptation, he departed from him until an opportune time, which says to me that he coming back, the devil coming back. But because the, the Lord Jesus Christ continued to speak what he knew, which was his word to the devil, the devil, he had to depart from him. But when another opportunity presented itself, just like it does with us, when we're in our weak moments, when we're being discouraged, the enemy comes to do what the Bible clearly says. He comes to kill, steal, and destroy. Mm -hmm. But thank God for Jesus. He came to give life and give it more abundantly. Abundantly. Hallelujah. Amen. And thank what you. the reference that what my beautiful bride just said, you'll find that in Matthew 12, verses 43 through 45, with the operative verse being 45. And it talks about when one unclean spirit goes from the evil from the person he goes back and gets seven more even yeah. more wicked spirits to fight you yeah. which leads me to my next point when you are in a championship bout when you're fighting for your life when you've been fighting for your life lately you've been fighting for the championship yeah. you may not be aware that you are not prepared for the rematch oh yeah you've been fighting the championship of your life to make sure that you crush the devil. But when you win, my friends, just keep in mind, he did it to our Lord and Savior, the second Adam. He did it to the first Adam. He's going to do it to me. He's going to do it to you. That means when, he, when you are defeating him, he's going to come back for more. What do I mean by that? Well, just take Christ. After he rose from this particular setting, the Bible says he went in. He said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. Yeah. I'm preaching the gospel. I'm setting the captives free. He did all that. He started healing people. Yeah, yeah. setting people free, uh, raising people from the dead. And then when it was his time, when they had ratted him out, when Judas ratted him out, so to speak, I'm using uh, ignorant terminology, but you know what I'm saying. Judas betrayed him and Caesar and all of them were coming to get him. He was where? In the Garden of Gethsemane. And when the weight of the world was on him, when a sinful weight was on him, Guess what he said? He said, please take this cup. I got you from me. Take this cup from me. Please take it from me. I'm hurting. He even told Peter and them, I'm, di I'm distressed. I don't have time to read it right now, but you go back and read it. I'm distressed. I'm hurting. But not my will, 
but your will be done. And so that moment is another moment where the enemy was coming to him when he was weak and he was feeling his humanity. Remember in the wilderness, he was feeling his humanity because he was fasting and praying. In the Garden of Gethsemane, he was feeling his weakness because he knew what he was about to experience as far as it relates to suffering and death. Yes. And he wanted that cup to pass him. But then he quoted back the word, not my will, but your will be done. Amen. So Jesus was approached twice, one in the wilderness and one in Gethsemane. Luke twenty two forty three is where you'll find that. Finally, I want to say to you, since my time is running short, you are, are, are spending a lot of energy lately fighting an enemy that you've already won against. I would like for you to take your energy from talking to the enemy and talk to the inner me. I want you to stop talking to the enemy the devil and giving your energy to the enemy, the devil, and start putting your focus, your energy, and your conversation on the inner me, the inner you. And I want you to feed yourself the word of the God. The word of God, amen. Not nothing more than the word of God. Yes. Amen. Amen. The word of God is quick, is sharper than any two edged sword. It is what you and I need to survive. And so I welcome you on our journey together yes. to give it your best. Give it your very, very best. Yes. Take the thoughts that you had in quarantine. Keep them in quarantine. If you fell short, do like they say in uh, those uh, programs, just get back up and keep trying. Okay, get back up and keep trying. Keep the momentum if you've been going without talking about your problem to the other people. Continue to fast, continue to pray, continue to give it to God. We're going to check with you next week to see, which is our final week of quarantine as it relates to that thing that you have requested from God. And we're going to see how we did. But until then, uh, next week, we'll be journeying into finding a friend. I'm not giving you the title. I'm giving you the concept. We're going to find a friend. We're going to biblically find out how we are going to get our team together. I want you to build a circle around you to help that quarantine idea that you have. God's quarantining it right now for your belief. That's why he's quarantining this, for your belief. He wants you to keep it to yourself and to him so he can build your confidence about it. But then at some point, he's going to need you to develop a relationship with human beings so that that vision or that thing can happen. Amen? Amen. But you've been giving it to the wrong people so far, so it hasn't been working. So he's formulating a plan for you and I to be healed from who we've been talking to and how we've been talking about it, to believe in God and making sure that we give it to him. And then we will be able to find the friendship that we need on next week. Amen. So Amen. God bless you for your time, your energy, your experience, your uh, patience to hear it. And I thank God for you. And we look forward to expressing to you next week what we have to say on the next evening. Shelly, do you want to take them into uh, uh, a direction of prayer? Yeah, amen. amen. Thank you. Thank you for the um, Bible study amen. lesson for this evening. Just want to remind you, if you didn't get the scriptures, um, I don't know if you can still see the, the, the oh, I guess the scriptures are still there, but Genesis chapter 2, verses 15 through 17, Genesis chapter 3, verses 1 through 4, and Luke chapter 4, verses 1 through 12. Amen. So we're going to close out in prayer, just want to thank you all again. The, those of you who have um, listened to this broadcast, you will be able to go back, if not tonight, sometime tomorrow, and hit replay. The website, again, is www.inspiredlifeministries247.com. Again, we thank you for encouraging us. Um, and just we just want to say thank you. Amen. And so at this time, we're going to um, close out in prayer. And tell you all, remember that God loves you. I love Hebrews 13, 5. He says, I will never leave thee nor forsake, forsake you. Thee. And so even times when we feel left by um, people emotionally and physically, that God is forever with us. Amen. Amen. Be encouraged to know that the Lord our God loves us all. And so we're going to close out in prayer. Amen. Amen.
Heavenly Father, most gracious God, it's in the matchless name of your son, Christ Jesus of Nazareth, that yes, we Lord come God. thanking you, Lord God, for the hearers on tonight. But my prayer is, Lord God, that we not just be hearers of your word, but that we will be doers. We thank you, Lord God, for your word that creates our heart, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for your word, thank for you, it brings God. correction and reproofs and encourages. We thank you, Almighty God, for the families that have joined, Lord God. And I thank you, Lord God, for every petition that has been made, Lord God, to you. And then we just ask, oh God, that you would give us, Lord God, the instructions, the know-how, Lord God, to obey your word, Lord God. Yes, Let Lord us God. not forget, Lord God, to repent, to forgive, and to move forward. We thank you, Lord God, for tonight. We thank you, Lord God, for this week. We thank you, Lord God, for just sending your only begotten son, Jesus Christ, to die for our sins. Yes, okay. We just thank you. We praise you. And we honor you. We magnify you, Lord God. Yes, and may all of the people that have listened on tonight and maybe perhaps those that will listen, you know, from years from this day, Lord God, that they will be encouraged by this message. In Jesus Christ's In name Jesus alone, name. we pray. Amen. Hey, God bless you all. Amen. We love God you. bless you. We appreciate